Okay, let's begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Veni Sancti Spiritus Repletuorum Corda Fidelium et Tui Amoris in Eis in Yemachende. Emite Spiritum Tum et Crea Buntum. Et Pero Vabis Facium Terra. Deus qui Corda Fidelium Sancti Spiritus Illustratione da Guisti, da Nobis in Iodem Spirito Recta Sapere. Et Eius Semper Consolatione Gaudere, per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Amen. So, today we're going to comment on the Gospel of St. Mark. Chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and John and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. So in today's gospel, we hear of the beginning, actually, of Jesus's public ministry. This might be a little after the wedding feast at Cana, you know. Um, he went back to his native place, his own neighborhood, his own um, hometown. And there, and there he, um, I have Ava here. Let me, and there he uh, preached in the synagogue. He read, right? He read uh, the scripture passage that was handed to him in the synagogue, which referred to him as being the Messiah. Okay? And, okay, let her play. Let her play. And the people who knew him from childhood, his playmates, see, Jesus' playmates, Jesus' neighbors, marveled at where he could have gotten the, um, the wisdom that he apparently had and he was you know preaching to them about the uh, the prophecies that related to him so they were wondering where did he get all of that you know where did he get all of that so the question to ask is you know why were they wondering why were the Jews wondering where Jesus got all the wisdom that he was imparting to them. You know what? I think it's because they were allowing their biases to uh, get in the way. They were not trying to understand Jesus for the objective truth that he was expressing to them. They were allowing their biases. They were allowing their their uh, their own impressions to get the better of them. Okay? They were not humble enough to accept the fact that Jesus, um, the Messiah that he was, that he was, uh, did not conform to the categories that they that they had, uh, you know, uh, uh, in their minds. They had preconceived categories about this king, the Messiah, the descendant of King David, who was going to free Israel. That was what they had in mind. Okay, That was the kind of concept they had of the Messiah. And Jesus came to them as a poor peasant, a carpenter. It's a thing, how can that be? How can this carpenter 
be the king that we were expecting. You see, a lot of times our own biases can get in the way of truth. And when we allow biases to overcome us, instead of looking at things with the eyes of objectivity, then we are in trouble. And we cannot do this. We cannot do this when we are talking of faith. When, when, we, when we're talking of matters of God, we cannot allow our preconceived ideas, our biases, our impressions, our feelings, our passions to get the better of us. Okay? Um, we should take truth at face value. We should learn to understand truth objectively, okay? not with our subjective uh, biases and preconceived ideas. So there's that um, saying, don't judge a book by its cover, right? And that's what these Jews were applying to Jesus. They were judging Jesus from what they could see in appearances rather than understanding the substance of who he is and what he's talking about. So Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. Okay? Lack of faith. Now, faith is a gift that comes to us through what sacrament? Baptism. Baptism, right? So faith is a gift that comes through baptism. But that faith, that faith that it comes to us as a gift, does not does not uh, 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 grow by itself, right? We we need to help that faith grow because faith is also a virtue that can grow in us and we have to actively grow that virtue. Now, there are three things I could recommend for us to, to grow that faith, okay? Number one, we have to pray for more faith. We have to pray that God gives us the grace, okay, of more faith. Just like, uh-oh, <laughs> you want to get down? Okay, there. Just like that, that father who had this son, okay, who was possessed by the devil. And he asked Jesus to, to intercede and to, um, to uh, cure his son, to get the devil out of uh, possessing his son. And our Lord asked him, well, do you believe that I can do this for you? And the father said, yes, Lord, I do believe. Help my unbelief. See? Help my unbelief. We have also to beg our Lord to increase the faith that, that was planted in our souls through baptism. Okay? Because it's a continuous grace that we need to, uh, to, um, to nurture and grow. Okay? So we have to keep asking our Lord to increase that faith. The second recommendation I have is that we have to continually continually learn about our faith. And that's why here at home we study the catechism every day. Okay? And we read the books that could help us understand our faith and grow in, uh, in, in wisdom of faith, in, in really going deep and understand what the church teaches us about dogmas and doctrines and practices of our Catholic faith. So we have to learn. We have to keep studying. And then thirdly, we have to learn to practice that faith, put that faith into practice by trusting God, by trusting in the providence of God, by trusting that God guides our lives, by trusting and abandoning the, 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 uh, our lives completely to God's hands. Which does not mean to say that we would be fatalistic and just throw all caution to the wind and just let God do his work. Well, uh, there is one part of faith that, uh, that, that allows us to do that. But at the same time, faith also requires that we have to try to work as best we can to do the will of God okay? as though everything depended on us. But we have to practice our faith as though everything depended on God. 
So trust is a very important component of faith. And in all of this, in all of this, how can we pray for faith? How can we study our faith? How can we abandon ourselves in God completely? There's another virtue that accompanies that faith and that allows that faith to grow. And that virtue is, God bless you, that virtue is humility. Humility. You see, that is what the Jews in the time of our Lord lacked. They lacked humility. They were so proud, full of pride, to even uh, to even recognize that this neighbor of theirs, this carpenter, this playmate they had from childhood was actually the Messiah, was actually the Son of God, who was the promised Messiah for Israel. See? Pride got in the way. And that is one uh, very dangerous situation. We cannot grow in faith if we are full of pride. We cannot grow in faith if we are conceited. Self-conceit, vanity, all of these are manifestations of pride. We cannot grow in faith if we don't obey. We don't learn to obey and submit our will to people in authority. See? And ultimately to God. We cannot grow in faith if we are proud. So let's learn to be humble and we will grow in faith. Okay? That's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for joining us in these morning gospel commentaries. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. 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 Say bye-bye, Eva. Bye. Come here. Come here, 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 come here. Say bye-bye. There. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You're loud and clear. Okay, bye-bye.